Hi, Robin with OxyDry. And uh, this is my view today. I'm looking across Okanagan Lake. And um, I'm in what's the area here is called West Kelowna. Uh, the city of Kelowna is over that way. Just, uh, I guess I'm a couple of miles down the lake. And uh, beautiful fall day. And I'm in a pretty big house here. This area, um, a lot of very big, very nice houses in this area. Million dollars and up, probably most of them. Um, I've cleaned this uh, basement area and I did a master bedroom and a uh, closet up above us. Finished that off. I did pre vacuum everything. This particular carpet is a. Um, a um, olefin and it is a uh, loop cut and loop there's the cut there cut pile and a loop a little bit lower so it's textured uh, kind, of, kind of a carpet um, and um, it's a type of fiber that has a tendency to kind of hold on to lint but uh, when I vacuumed it um, the Hoover hush tone which I'm using is the vacuum I took it out no problem at all um, so I've cleaned everything I just I, there was not a single spot on this carpet absolutely no visible traffic lanes kind of one of those cream puff jobs which is nice <laughs> and uh, now I'm doing the post vacuuming and um, so I'll start from the furthest point and uh, work my way back to the bottom of the steps over there. I'm using the hush tone at its lower setting. Here's the higher setting. Lower setting. And um, I could, this carpet, you can just see it's kind of from the machine going over, it kind of lays the pile a little bit this way and that way. So, um, and there's a little bit of lint here and there that's been picked up. Um, very little but there's a, a couple of bits here and there so I could um, groom this carpet but I generally don't groom I prefer to post vacuum partly because um, just one more vacuuming is always a good idea it actually quite frankly impresses the customer and um, I physically find it easier to vacuum than using the, the rake uh, my shoulders are old and worn out and I really feel the pushing and pulling with the rake, so I find the uh, vacuum is actually easier because it more or less rolls back and forth in most cases anyway. Even though it does actually take longer than if I was to use a rake or a, a broom, um, but that's fine. I, the benefit of actually doing a post vacuum at the same time I think is advantageous. So that's what I do. And this carpet didn't get kind of the texture that it is <laughs> you can hear the brush roll just touch the carpet there it really makes quite a sound so anyway come along with me for a ride and we'll vacuum the carpet and by the way the carpet the bedroom up there where I did first is actually dry downstairs which I just finished is just very slightly damp it'll probably be dry by the time I vacuum or within 30 minutes anyway so here we go Now the only thing I actually have to move is this this little dresser here. The uh, customer had pretty well pretty well moved everything for me, so that was nice. She forgot that. <laughs> Of course, when I post vacuum, I'm going to work backwards because I'm wanting to have the vacuum be the uh, last thing that goes over the carpet and put nice little vacuum V's in it.
one of the nice things about this vacuum is uh, it has a very long cord on it. And the Kirby I was using before, which is a nice vacuum. Um, the cords are mad <laughs> maddeningly short. Just really too short. Probably my pet peeve about the Kirby more than anything. But the cord on this thing, I think I think it's 50 foot long. 40 foot or 50 foot, I can't remember now. But it's, it's long. I usually can find a central plug for this and uh, usually it'll reach pretty much everywhere from there. And that's, uh, that's a nice feature. A little bit of a time saver. I'm using my foot to sort of pick the cord behind me. Get behind the door. Another nice thing I'm finding with this vacuum is it gets up to the edges very well. I, uh, most of the time, you don't have to use the, the pipe that pops off the drain the edges. It, in most cases, it's pulling the dust right out of there. You saw my last video where I, uh, pardon me if I um, showed me uh, using this uh, on that shag carpet in the closet. I mean, it was incredible the power of that. They were literally pulling the shag off the underpad. Tremendous, uh, tremendous airflow this vacuum has. More so than the Kirby, which is actually saying a lot. through the cord out there if you're wondering what I did. You see the see the light? That's um, uh, the brush roll indicator. It's actually is the piezo, uh, similar to the Kirby design, I guess. 
So there's no actual battery there. It just uses a, an LED that it's excited by the magnet in there. And then it glows. Pretty cool, actually. Very simple. Nothing to break. <laughs> okay. Now I'm going to head across the basement. I don't, I won't quite reach it across here. That's why I left the reposition. Yeah, there we go. I believe the carpet is actually about eight years old. Uh, there's no, absolutely no visible wear on this carpet that I can see anyway. Maybe just very, very slight wear on the entrance of the master bedroom, but other than that, there's no, there's no traffic lanes on this carpet at all. I don't think I've ever actually cleaned this particular carpet before with this sort of these ridges on it. At least rarely enough that I can't remember anyway. I'm trying to remember to uh, tilt the vacuum slightly forward when I release the uh, the uh, lock to uh, put it into operating position give it a there's a the locking mechanism there I you know it obviously it will be a wear point but I remember to not um, not do it like this you hear it click. I kind of actually had it kind of pulled back a bit. You push it forward a bit and then release it. So there's no wear point on that little shoulder where the release uh, um, the little button is or whatever. But eventually these things do wear out. And I'm anticipating wear points like that. And operating it accordingly will hopefully get a few more years of life before something dramatic wears out or breaks okay I'm gonna put this plug back where it was because I can reach from here now just couldn't quite reach all the way into the corner of the bedroom so that's why I did it that way See, it's almost, that, that's pretty far.
Yeah, this vacuum actually um, comes in two versions. This is the, uh, uh, I guess that's a 16 inch wide or a 15 inch wide. Uh, and, uh, but it does come in a 13 inch wide as well. But I didn't think that that was, I mean, the narrow one was of any advantage to me. Uh, I like them a little bit bigger. <laughs> And the other advantage uh, of the Kirby is the this vacuum is able to get under things a bit better. The Kirby motor sticks up so high, so it's not a it's not a critical thing, but it is a thing. <laughs> I'm I still carry the Kirby with me, but um. Uh, I don't expect that I'll ever use it except perhaps on some really long type carpets, fiber type car carpets. But um, I really, when I did that shag one the other day, that was really my test to see whether, how well this would work on a really long pile. So it did very well. So maybe I won't be carrying the Kirby anymore. I have the room for it, so for now I'll keep it in the van. I have four vacuums in the van. So really this is only, at least primarily only for visual effect. Um, although, I, I guess I am still pulling up a little bit of something out of the carpet. And again, one more vacuuming doesn't hurt. And when the customer realizes you're doing that, you have to vacuum their whole house twice. That does make an impression. I've had them say so. <laughs> And uh, most carpet cleaners don't vacuum it even once. I'm nearly at the end here. Just a few square feet here. A bit of fluff there on the edge. Oh, I see another fluff. Hang on. Got it. 
so let's take a look at the bags. It's uh, a little more than a quarter full. Although I did another job the other day with, I think I did with this bag. I, I did a job earlier, actually. Two jobs earlier. So, anyway. That's it. I'm all done. Time to wrap it up and go home. Just another day.